So what do you think of when you think of the word foundation? For me, Jesus will be the first thing I think of when I think of foundation. That's where my foundation of life has come from. And then I think of core because a strong core is our foundation of fitness. So Jesus is my foundation of life. My core is my foundation of fitness. So this program today is a workout that I've created and it touches on every single muscle of your core. Today we're going to be doing it as a corrective exercise. So we're going to be doing 15 reps of each movement. It's not going to repeat at all. I've also programmed this as a Tabata and that's a lot of fun to do all the same moves but with a Tabata timer or Tabata music. But today we're gonna keep it with a 15 rep and our verse today is going to be from Matthew 24 through, well, Matthew 8, 24 through 28. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. All right, so that is how I feel about our core. All of the exercises you wanna do in life, if you don't have a strong core, it's going to be like building your workout on sand and you're going to have injuries. So our first movements of this workout are going to be four moves for the transverse abdominis. So the first one is going to be a dead bug. So you will see a pattern of repeats with this workout because we have done so many days of corrective exercise so far. And now we're putting all of these movements together into workout programs. So we're on dead bug. So this is your dead bug. If you have flexible legs, your legs will be up in the air. If you don't have the flexibility, you can have bent legs. But we're gonna start with 15 on each side. So one, two, and make sure you're keeping your spine down. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If you're doing this correctly, you're gonna feel it right around in here. That is your transverse abdominus. So keeping your hands and feet up like that and keeping your spine down is taking the strength of your transverse abdominus to do that. All right, so now we are on forearm plank marches. So if you can get on your forearms and do a good plank, we're gonna squeeze our glutes so that our plank is staying in a straight line and we're going to march. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we have 15 more, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Again, if you were doing this right, you should be feeling it all through here, your transverse abdominus. All right, now we're gonna do something that seems different to do on a core exercise, but it's a Romanian deadlift. We're doing this whole program with no weights. Two. If you have weights, you can hold weights for this movement. 
So we're pushing those hips back, taking your hands to about right below your knees. When you get to the bottom, blow out, make your core tight. That's your transverse abdominus protecting your low back and come up. All right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have five more. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, now we have goblet squats. So a goblet squat is holding a weight in front of you right here, but we're not holding weight, so we're going to squeeze as hard as we can our palms together, and that's going to be our resistance for our goblet squat. Your feet can be wider with the goblet squat, and your toes can point out. A lot of people are more comfortable with their toes out on a squat, so this could be a little bit more like a sumo here or goblet. So you want your knees, um, your toes and your knees to go in the same direction, depending on where you're at on this. So we're going to go 15, 14, 13, squeeze your glutes on the way up. Keep squeezing those palms together. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, that was our transverse abdominus. We're moving on to our internal and external obliques. So we are going to do, this one's going to be a little bit of a metabolic round here. Since we don't have weights, this one's going to be a landmine. So we're taking it from side up, side down. We're going to do a little faster. So we do get a little bit of metabolic going on here. Push those hips back. Inhaling, exhaling. I think we're on 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and we have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm hoping you felt it in your obliques, not your low back. All right, now we're doing a fun one. This one's gonna be a jab. side plank sorry so we got plank and we're going to side plank going into plank and side plank Nineteen, 
20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Ooh, I'm glad to put that one to rest. <laughs> All right, then we have elbow to knee mountain climbers, all right? You can do these in a high plank if you want. And we're gonna take it side to side like this. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right, at least we got that one done quickly. <laughs> All right, moving on to rectus abdominis, the one that everybody wants to work, the six pack. But our rectus abdominis is not our most important core muscle. Our transverse abdominis is very important. Our rectus abdominis is usually tight on a lot of people. If you can imagine that, it's one that you should stretch out on a stability ball. But everybody wants the six pack, so we're gonna do it. And I'm not the biggest fan of trying to strive for a six pack. All right, a reverse crunch. You're doing a pelvic tilt here. You're bringing your legs up and down. You're not flinging them like that. Flinging them will not be using the muscles you want to use. You want to use your core to raise your hips up and squeeze. Imagine you want to create that six pack that everybody wants to squeeze the six pack muscles to bring your hips up. Five, we have 10 more. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, now we have roll ups. So you're gonna start down, arms behind your back, inhale, exhale, and then you can like clamp your heels to the floor to try to help use your heels to help you get up. Inhale, exhale, and rise up and make sure you have good posture when you land and then roll back down. That's one, two, three, four, get up. So we just did this one a couple days ago, I believe. So we are going to have our elbow down, pretending that we're holding a kettlebell right here. So the elbow down and a bent knee, the hand over here is at an angle. Your palm is facing down and you're going to press through the palm of your hand and the heel of your other foot and up for one. Two, 
three, four, and look up at your hand, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right, other side. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'll come closer so you can see my you can see my hand. All right, press that hand down and the heel and up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. We have five more. Five, four, three. Two and one. All right, good job. All right, so now we have the multipedis. This is one of your back muscles, that's part of your core. Bird dog. <clears throat> All right, so we've done bird dog many times out there. So this is the one opposite arm, opposite leg. If you want to advance your opposite arm, opposite leg, you're going to go into a bear and do opposite arm, opposite leg, and bear. If not, come down on your knees. I'm gonna try to do mine and bear. All right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have to keep it really low and bear. 14, 14, 15. I'm gonna take it down for the next 15 to regular bear because I'm losing my form on my um, bear bird dog. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then we have five more to 30. Two, three, four, and five. All right. More multifidus is going to be the Superman. Inhale, exhale, and row, and then back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. 
Moving on to swimmers. Here we go. So a total of 30, 15 on each side. All right. And then we have renegade row. So you can do your renegade row on your hands and knees like this or in plank if you're able to. All right. Let me just pull this down here. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, moving on to glutes. All right, so you can stand next to a wall for this one if you need to. This one is going to work all angles of your glutes. The single leg balance reach. So we're gonna go forward, side, turn your toe and take it back. That's one. Forward, side, and turn, two. Three, and turn that to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right, do a little bit of a TFL stretch. Give yourself a little bit of smackers there and we're turning to the other side. All right, forward side, back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, slides is because and I'll show you since I'm at a wall you're supposed to make your leg look like it's sliding on a wall if you have your leg too forward like that you're not getting the activation where you need it to be so if you actually slide at the wall you'll feel that activation a lot more for your glute medias so one two three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, five, four, three, two, and one. And I really feel that in my obliques as well. I'm sure you do too. All right, other side. Set yourself up. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, five, four, three, two, and one. Am I wincing or am I smiling? I don't know. I learned it from the girls on Brazil butt lift. <laughs> they always had to be smiling the entire time. I'm like, those girls, it's painful doing this Brazil butt lift. So I realized that they're wincing and not smiling. So that's what I'm doing too. All right. So now we're going into a long lever bridge. You have to have really strong glutes in order to do this move. So if you have strong glutes, you're going to hold yourself up in a bridge, straight legs and march. If that's too much, the more you bring your legs in to march, the easier it will become until you're at a regular glute march here where pretty much anybody at any level can handle this one. All right, so I'm gonna see how far I can get on the long lever and I might bring myself forward as we go. So we have one, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, I'm gonna bring it on back a little. For the last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, moving on to pelvic floor. So we've got side lunges for pelvic floor. All right, so we're gonna do one side at a time. So we'll start with your left side. So we'll go one, two, three, four. If you want to, you can go for add a bicep curl into this. Six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right, other side. Do you feel that work in your core? That's why a side lunge is a core exercise and not just any core exercise, but a pelvic floor core exercise. Four, five, six, seven, squeeze everything when you come up, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 
14, 15. All right, our next one is a frog bridge. <laughs> Here we go, putting our feet together. Squeeze your feet together as you come up into your bridge. So you have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Four, three, two, and one. All right. Now we have just one more move. It's for your scapular sta stabilizers. I have one that we could do with no weights and the rest of them are with weights. So we're just gonna end with one of these movements. It's a push up. So we're going push up to a plus and back down, push up and plus. So that plus, you're going to press through your scapula muscles and make it come up, kind of like a cat stretch out of your push up. So if you're needing to do knee push-ups, it's gonna look like this, push-up, and plus. Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and 15. All right, let's do an upward dog. If you have a healthy spine and you're able to do this, all right? And then we're gonna go into child's pose. Take one arm under, put your ear down. Looking through, hello there. <laughs> All right. And over to the other side. And into a downward dog. Stretch those calves and your lats. So spread your fingers, press through the palms of your hands. Try to get your heels down and push the booty back. You'll feel a good stretch in your hamstrings, your calves, your lats, all those tight muscles. And stepping forward into a hip flexor stretch. You can turn and then reach over towards your knee. All right. And switching sides. Hip flexor stretch on this side. Turn and over. All right. So I know that was a lot of moves put into one program, but these are all the best of the best of core exercises. 
So keep on doing these and you will get a stronger core and hopefully less back pain. So I will see you tomorrow for another workout and another Bible scripture. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.